the qualities that really see you through the practice. Or many times very unassuming. The flashy things that can happen in the meditation are not necessarily things you can rely on. Your real friends are the ones that stay in the background. Take patience, for, existence, for example, endurance. These are qualities that are not emphasized in our society. In fact, we're probably one of the few societies that encourages children to be impatient, to want to actually provoke their desires, provoke their anger, provoke their delusion. All those advertisements that are aimed at kids to make them want things right away, right now. And so they end up with that particular friend in the mind is very weak. So we consciously have to work on it to make it strong. In other words, when the meditation goes well, you stick with it. When it doesn't go well, you still stick with it. When strong emotions are screaming in your ears, you used to just stick there with a breath. And it may not seem to be doing much, but it's actually a very important weapon in your arsenal, a very important ally to have in your in your battle with the defilements. Because many times when the defilements come on strong, they the strong part is the initial impact. And if you can withstand that and sit through it for a while, you get to the point where it weakens. That's when you can deliver a, a blow. So this is how patience and this is how endurance are your friends. They help you last through the difficult periods so that when things are more propitious, when things will work, when you can finally think of a way of dealing with a problem, or suddenly see something that you haven't seen for a long time. It's the patience, it's the endurance that gets you there. And again, these are mild, unassuming qualities. If you had a color for them, it would probably be gray. But they're the ones you have to depend on. So learn to have an appreciation for them and learn to work with them. Patience doesn't mean that you just sit there and don't do anything. It simply means that you are willing to be in it for the long over the long haul. And if something's not working in the mind, well you try various approaches. You don't give up. One approach is simply watching things. But there are other approaches that you can try as well when something comes into the mind. If the breath isn't comfortable, try various ways of making it more comfortable. If the mind has trouble settling down, try to figure out exactly what it is. Is it physical discomfort in the present moment, or is it some unresolved issue that you're carrying in from, it, from the day or the week or whatever? But what it means is that you keep trying. You don't give up after one approach doesn't work. You try three, four, five, keep at it. And again, some of the approaches may be proactive, some of the pro approaches may be more, more passive, just simply watching. But you keep at it to see if there's some way you can learn to understand what's going on, some way you can deal with whatever the issue is. And if you run out of ideas, well, just sit there and watch for a while to see what comes up. And keep yourself solidly grounded. This is important for, for endurance. Because if you don't have a good solid grounding, it's very easy for things to snap. 
to keep reminding yourself of why you're here, why you're practicing. And think of all those countless sufferings that you're avoiding simply by being here practicing. Sometimes we forget. Sitting here meditating seems begins to seem like a burden, a big wasteland in our lives, and everything lush and appealing is out there someplace else. We'll do a reality check frequently. What is there out there? Well, there are people running around deluded, closing their eyes to the fact aging, illness, and death are going to come, and they're not the least bit prepared, hoping that somehow if they don't think about these things, these things will not come. Or thinking that there's nothing you can do about them, so you might as well grab what you can while you can. All of which is delusion. There's a story of the monk. It's in the canon. The monk who was out in a little hut in the forest, and he overheard the sounds of some merrymaking in a village nearby. It was probably some holiday of some kind. And he was sitting there thinking about how much fun they must be having there in the village and how little fun he was having here where he was. This deva appears to him and says, You don't realize how lucky you are. All those people are going to hell. They really envy you right here. Whether or not you think that hell is the only alternative to, that would make this practice look good, it's, it's really not. But just look at where most people's lives are going right now. Either they're totally aimless, or they've got these bizarre ends that are going to create more suffering for themselves or for other people around them. And all the important work in the mind is just not getting done. So here we are, we have all the time and the opportunity, the support that we need to focus directly on our minds. And it's a difficult job, but we've got the opportunity. A lot of Most people in the world don't have that opportunity. So even when the meditation is not going well, it's better than not meditating. Because what does that mean? You're, you have the opportunity to look at your mind. And even if you haven't figured out the issues yet, things don't seem to be going the way you're going. The fact that you're here looking at your mind means that there's hope, there's a possibility that the answers will come, that you'll figure things out or suddenly see things that you didn't see before. If you're not looking, you can't see those things. And most people's lives are distracted. Thoreau's line about people living lives of quiet desperation. They're also leading lives of very noisy distraction. All the things that are really important in their lives are getting drowned out by all their other responsibilities. And even when they can take a breather from their responsibilities, they get drowned out by other distractions. People clamoring for their vote, clamoring for their, their money. They don't even have a scrap of time for themselves. Here we have whole days, weeks, months to look at the mind. So remind yourself of how fortunate you are to be here at a place where the bottom line is not the dollar. The bottom line is how you're training your mind. And it's a big job, but big jobs always require patience. And what does it mean? Your willingness just to sit here with whatever comes up. your willingness to use your ingenuity to deal with whatever comes up, your willingness to learn from your mistakes. A lot of times that's one of the things that undercuts patience, is that we make a mistake and we get frustrated. We give up easily. So if you see that happening, remind yourself, this is where the problem is. If something doesn't work, well, try something else. If that doesn't work, try something else. If nothing seems to work, just sit there and let things 
follow their own course for a while, just watch what happens on its own. And maybe you'll get a glimpse of a new idea, a new approach, a new understanding. Because insight doesn't come when you will it. Again, this is an issue of patience as well. You want something right away, you want it right now, you do this and you want the results right there. There are things you can will in the practice and there are other things you can't. And a lot of the important insights come totally unexpectedly, which means that you're putting yourself in a position where you're more likely to see But the problem is you don't know beforehand when those insights will come. So you need patience. Like the hunter. The hunter goes out and doesn't know whether the rabbit will come by at 10 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So he has to, just simply has to wait there, alert, quiet, and maybe hungry. But he has to learn how to put, not focus on the hunger. Focus on being alert and being quiet. Those are the qualities that will allow him to see when the rabbit comes by. So you're here to be quiet and alert to watch when the mind begins to show itself. These are all our problems. We tend to run around inside the mind, inside our thoughts. We put them on like clothes, and so we can't see them because we're inside them. But if you learn to step back and not just grab everything that comes by, but learn to watch it instead, patiently, with endurance, you begin to see things for what they are. So when you're sitting through a bad meditation, nothing seems to work, at least remind yourself, at least you're developing powers of endurance, powers of patience. And those are not to be sneezed at. Those are your unassuming friends. The ones that are not flashy, but it turns out that when push comes to shove, they're there. The Thais have an expression of pun gin ga pun dai. Pun gin are the people, that, your friends who are, you have a good time with, they, they like to eat with you. Literally means eating friends. But when push comes to shove, they disappear. Then the other one, the Pu and Dai, those are the literally dying friends. They'll stand next to you while you're dying. They'll help you when death threatens. And patience and endurance are that kind of friend. When things get difficult, they're there. So encourage their friendship. Keep them around. Associate with them as much as you can, and they'll see you through a lot of things. <laughs>